Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This video is not my usual cup of tea. This one's about testing old car batteries. I've got one here and I've got, I'm actually surrounded by them that you can see, you can't see just out of shot. There's about five of them up on the bench and I've got my multimeters here and I've got a little system that I've made up for testing them. It's a load tester for batteries. And the usual way, the usual way of testing batteries is with a multimeter and you test the voltage and let's just do that now on this one. So I'll set that to voltage and I'll take my leads. One's already clamped in up here on the negative and if I put the positive on there we're getting 12.4 volts on this battery. So the arrangement I have, I've got a big battery clamp here that goes down here to this brass block and on the other end I've got this red lead here that goes to this clamp. I've got a little ammeter here wired in to this block on the red side or the positive side of the coil and the other side of the ammeter is just clipped on to this coil here and this is about two and a half meters length of two mil fence wire just iron wire and it should give a really high resistance load to test that the battery can put out a lot of power for uh, and sustain that power for a bit of time so the voltage is there at zero at the moment so i'm gonna get everything dangling i don't want anything dangling on the fence wire here because it gets a bit hot that's the whole point it heats up like a resistor really it's a resistive load so watch the voltage and watch the amps current down there on this uh on this gauge here we'll go for a couple of seconds or maybe more so you clamp it on it goes off the scale there on the amps and then starts dropping back and the voltage stays constant at 10.6 10.7 the current's dropping back a bit, we're three or four or five seconds now, and they stabilize there roughly. So, I'm gonna check the voltage again now that we've got the load off, and it's gone back up to 12.2, which is, I think this battery's okay based on that. Now this is a sealed unit, so I can't get in with the old bubble type meter to test the condition of the liquid, and I also can't check the levels. I can maybe see them through there, but, uh, on an older battery, we'll have a look at one in a minute, you can check the levels of the fluid in the battery and that gives you a better indication. Well, it doesn't give you a better indication, it gives you a different type of indication of the condition of the battery and of the acid that's in there. So where did I find this thing? Well, I was watching videos online uh, by a guy called Andy Reynolds and he was using nichrome wire to make a two volt battery drop tester. I think it's a load drop tester for his big solar panel two volt batteries. I've got 12 volt batteries, so it's a slightly different arrangement, but I got it in this book here, written by a guy called Michel Daniek. And way back on a page 100, happily enough, he has a little battery tester here in a box. And it's quite a nice arrangement. And he uses the VU meters that have been repurposed out of a stereo, and he has a button. And so that's the wiring diagram there that they've prepared. So the voltage is always across it, and I attempted to do that with a little voltmeter that came off a car jump starter, similar to this one. But for some reason, and I don't know why, whenever you connect the alligator clip, and whenever you connect the load, it just uh, it just drops off. So it like, drops offline completely, and maybe that's because it's gone below 10, and it just can't see it on this scale. And if, you know, if that one went to 10, maybe that's what happens there. But it's a bit it's a bit fickle this one here so you're much well i find it much easier to read off the digital multimeter i have my big avo meter here on the side as well but i find that it's uh you have to do a bit of thinking because it's got so many scales there for voltage and and, and all the different things of resistance and everything else so that's the diagram there um the only issue i found with this was it says connect the plus of the voltmeter at the end of the coil and place the minus of the using the metal part from a connector block. So I've used the alligator clip here for, as a temporary fix. He, I think he means ammeter here, because it's talking about current. So you might want to read that if you do. You can press pause, and again, you could press pause again. That's all it says on it, and it doesn't really tell you enough, but it says a voltage drop is one to two volts. So we went from 12 down to 10, which is, you know, maybe too much on that battery. Um, the other thing I think is that this is maybe designed to give uh, 80 to 100 amps, to, to draw 80 to 100 amps out of a battery. And this is only a 
Oh no, it says it's a 330 amp starting load, so I'm, I'm gone a bit wild there. No, that's okay. It's a 330 amp battery. I thought that was, uh, I thought I was going the wrong way there. I thought I was overloading it, but no, that should be okay then. If you're drawing 100 amps out of a 330 amp start battery for a couple of seconds, that should be okay. It says it down here as well. So let's have a look at another battery with the water thing here, and then let's try it with this arrangement here. So here's another battery. This one is a 12 volt, 60 amp hour battery. I don't know, it says 540E in there, so I wonder is that the starting, um, the maximum current? Let's get the voltmeter on it first. Let's get that up, this is still hot. Nope, it's cooled down. Let's get that up there. So we're going for voltage, and it's given 12.4 volts. So then I've taken all of the little caps off. I'll check this. I'll probably edit through. Squeeze and drop. Well, it's in the yellow there. Oh, I probably didn't see that on camera. I'll do the second one. So you can see that one's in the green. It's floating in the green. I checked the levels in here as well. There is enough water covering all of the plates inside on this one. Now, I'm no authority on batteries. That one's in the green. And that one again is in the green, if you can see just there. I'm no authority on these things. I, I'm just tinkering in a shed with what I've got around me. I've taken apart one of those old yellow battery testers. That one's in the green. Not battery testers, battery jump starters for a car. They tend to have a little sealed lead acid battery inside them, but they have the, the big clamps on them, and that one's green. I'm going to go back to the first one there and just see what's going on. Yeah, it's floating actually green to yellow there. So that's all coming up green. So let's then do the drop test on this. And I'll give that a rinse out later on in clean water. For now it's okay there. You can see the current here. Got this alligator clip like that. Get something under there just to hold it up a bit better. Get my clamp and clamp in my neutral. It's not neutral, it's negative. We're not charging, so there shouldn't be any gases being discharged off any of these batteries. And we take the live over here then. What do we say it was before? 12.4 was it? Something like that. Let's put that down there. 12.4 again. So then with one arm up like that. Let's clamp on the positive. Now in the book it has a little button, so you wouldn't you just clamp it on and then press the button to do the testing, which is far better than this. There we go. It's got a voltage drop of 1.2, 1.3, and voltage is rising again. The current's dropping off a little bit. We've, we've been there a few seconds now, and that one seems to be holding okay. So let's get that off. And check it again. It should still be around 12.2, so we've lost a little bit of voltage there. I don't know if this is working or not. I'm going to try it on a battery now that I think is a dud to see if there's a difference. And uh, we'll see how we go. So I'll turn it off and come back to a dud battery. So physically, this is a much larger battery. 100 amp hours, 800 amps CCA. I think that's like your starting capacity. So let's check the voltage on that. It's coming at 10.7, so already it is quite low. I haven't charged it recently, I'd say. Or I might have. I probably tried charging it and... I'm guessing that's uh, didn't, nothing happened. Nothing much happened. Now I want to keep your keep your eyes on this down here. Keep your eyes on this as well. I think with this one, it might drop off quite suddenly. So voltage is ten point seven, or even we're not getting much current off that at all, and the voltage has dropped down to one. 1.0, so that's just completely kicked out battery. Try it again there, voltage is down to 1.2 volts, and there isn't even any, there's a tiny amount of current coming off it, but you know, nothing really. So I'm gonna say that this is a dud battery. It also has an indicator on top here uh, that if you were to look down, you should see a color. I think it's meant to have red or green in there. It has nothing. So it could be that the fluid levels are wrong. It has a kind of a sealed top on it, so you can't, unscrew the top like you could on the other one. I've tried 
snapping it off, but it doesn't seem to snap off. I think these are just a sealed unit that when they're done, they're done. So then one more battery. This is a smaller one this time. That I've just had on to charge. And I can't remember if I thought it was good or not, so we will find out. This one is a Sol Solite. I don't know what this was. It looks like a car battery, but it could be from anything. Let's get that clamp on there. Let's get that wire out of the way. It's worth bearing in mind, I may have said it already, this gets very hot when you're using it, so you can only use it for a few seconds. Let's check the voltage on this. 12.8, it's good and high. Again, this one's sealed, so there's not much I can do other than test it this way. Uh, let's put this on. So it's given a good high current, and then it's dropping off quite rapidly. It's gone down to 11.1 volts, but it's not... It's dropping off, but it's not just collapsing like that previous one. And you know, this is this is probably testing it for too long, really. It'd be the equivalent of trying to start a car that wouldn't start, and you're drawing that huge current through. So I think that battery might be okay. Give it one more go. Current goes up. And then after a couple of seconds, it backs off a little bit. We're down to 11.4 volts. But when I take that away, we're back up to 12.3. So about one volt drop, which I think indicates that it's okay. Now I'm not sure why these batteries get thrown out. Let's try one more. The other thing is that as this coil heats up, its resistance will change. So this is a, another 12 volt, 45 amp hour, 330 amps. Did we try this one already actually at the start? I can't remember now. We may have, what have we got coming out of this one? 12.4. Let's try this one again. Get a better look at that ammeter down the bottom. So 12.5 down to 10.7, so it's almost two volts. The current there is staying quite steady. It's dropping back a bit, 10.9. So I, like, I don't know if that's dead or not. I don't really know what I'm doing. And I don't, like, I, I think it's taken a charge and it's held it. It's, this is, hasn't been charged for maybe a month. 12.3 volts isn't massive for starting a car, but if I want it just for drawing down a bit of power to try and use it as part of a bicycle project, which is where I'm thinking on these things, it might be enough. It doesn't need that high current, but it just the high current shows that the battery has some, some amount of energy stored in it. And I've got one more that I'm gonna test. This is a little Bosch battery. What's it getting there? 8.2 volts, so I presume this one's toast. So let's hold that on and see what happens. It's coming up with a kind of a middle of current, but it's gone down to five volts there. The book says anything below nine is, is dead. It's gone down to four and a half, 4.4 volts. So the voltage keeps dropping. Current's holding, but you know, when the voltage is that low, I think this one's a dud as well. So tell me I'm wrong in the comments or tell me I'm, I'm right. I'm not sure here and I'm not pretending to be an authority on this. Like I found what I think is an error in the book. I was working to but like it's it's pretty easy to see if you follow the wiring diagram that, that there was a, an error in the book I, I'm quite happy with this because it's like it's split this batteries out into three goods and two two duds at the moment I've got another one charging and I've got another one outside so I just gathered them up over time come across them from time to time and this is a kind of a handy way to decide straight away if it's worth keeping so what I might do now is make a little box for this and get some kind of a high current switch. Like high current DC switch is, is probably quite a rare thing and I, maybe maybe it might be simpler to make one with a big spring and some kind of contacts or something like that. I don't know, if you've got any hints on that, let me know or there's something that there would be a switch in. Like maybe just taking apart a car starter solenoid and using it manually might do the trick, you know, something like that because the contacts in there have to be good for this kind of thing and just make putting a big heavy spring in under it, like a clutch spring or something, that might be too heavy. Any comments are welcome. So I just thought that I would do one more battery here and uh, I got quite an interesting result when I did it off camera. So I wonder, can I replicate that? There we go, there's the voltage and you can see the current down there. Initially when I put it on, I was getting, yeah, just over 12 volts. So that's something. When I put this on, voltage dropped and now it keeps on dropping. Look at that, it's just running away. 
it held steady for a couple of seconds initially but now it's just dropping right down current's kind of steady but the voltage has gone way down so that's another another failed battery seven we have to six now in a minute and this wire is getting hot but if the voltage has gone that low i don't think that's any good and the current was dropping as well so the voltage is climbing then again after we release it from the load but uh not great now i don't know maybe that battery would take a charge and then be okay as it stands i don't particularly need it i've got loads of other ones that i think are okay but if you know let me know in the comments appreciate it thanks for watching see you later